Welcome and Denise. Well, Denise is my mother and um, I heard about Malcolm when I was very young. Uh, I knew that he was my mother's first fiancé and that she loved him very much and he was Australian and uh, that they'd met him at university in Grenoble before the war. Very hard to pinpoint when it was. I know that my mother from time to time used to say with some um, exasperation or even bitterness, or oh, you know, your, your, your father's French girlfriend in some dismissive way. So the back of my mind, we always knew, but he, I never remember him ever mentioning her. Um, and as time go, went on, we realized that her dislike of things French had something to do with this woman in my father's past that it was not spoken of. In 1938, just before World War II, an Australian called Malcolm Morris and a French girl, Denise Jourdain, meet each other in Grenoble and fall in love. My last letter from her was written, um, I think, the day or the day after the uh, Allied landing in North Africa, after which complete silence. In 1943, Malcolm met Moira Dunn, an English lady working for MI5, and they got married. He told me of walking into um, a pub in England about a year after he'd married my mother. And there was a crowded pub and there was a woman with his, her back to him. And for a second he thought it was Denise. And he said he felt as though he'd been hit in the stomach. Les Allemands ont envahi la France. Mais ils ont commencé la France. Ils ont commencé. Euh, C'est un, un ami qui m'a euh, introduit à mouvement combat. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Morris joined the British Army, trained four years, was leading the fire trucks on a motorcycle during the blitz in the bombed out streets of London, and finally got to the continent in a tank. Denise Jourdain became enraged at the weak response of her government and of her people to the German attack and joined the resistance. Under the cover of a Red Cross nurse, she became a courier. A dangerous relationship with a German officer gave her info on the movements of troops against the Maquis. Et j'avais demandé au, à Bruchner, euh, genre, non, non, je suis sûr qu'il n'est pas juif, c'est pas possible, je sais bien que non, c'est pas. Alors elle m'a dit, vous prouvez-le-moi. Et alors on a fait des, des fausses, euh, un, un, un faux acte de naissance. Mm -hmm. Il a fallu tout changer. Denise and Geoffrey were living in Paris some years after the war and she went to order a whole lot of furniture and um, to furnish a flat and she went back to pay and she said but this the price isn't right this bill isn't enough and the man said we know what your family did for our people. After the war she met an English gentleman Geoffrey Peters who fell for her at first sight. Her initial reaction was, uh, my first love is Malcolm. And his response, I would love to be your second love. And that she became. Now we have four people. We have two families, held together by love and loyalty. Then, after many years of married life, both Denise and Malcolm have lost their partners. And one fine day, Malcolm goes to Grenoble and proposes to Denise. Oui, mais au début, je, je pensais que euh, je, euh, enfin, euh, que je ne pourrais pas aimer Malcolm autant qu'il m'aimait. Et alors, je me sentais un tout, tout petit peu hypocrite de d'accepter sa proposition, parce que je me rendais compte que je lui donnais pas ce que lui me donnait. Et j'en ai parlé pas mal avec mes enfants qui m'ont dit que j'étais complètement idiote. <rire> Et que du moment que je donnais toute la tendresse que je pouvais lui donner, et peu à peu, je pense que je pourrais lui donner plus que de la tendresse, c'est-à-dire le véritable amour. 
and they lived together for the next nine years. With your help, I would love to tell this story full of hope, full of courage, and full of love.